All right, well, Chas Smith, welcome back. It's The Grit, April 12th, 2024. Looks like one of us is in paradise. Paradiso. Paradiso, it's not me. Just, one of, one, just to one let of the listeners the, uh, know. It's for once it's not you? Yeah, I mean, not for once. It's just not me. I just, mm. in case listeners were confused that I might be in paradise. Nope. Well, we're going to hope that the internet connection works throughout the duration of the show, but so far, so good. Uh, how is Paradise, David Lee Scales? It's kind of dreamy, to be honest. So uh, have you ever been to El Salvador before? I have been to El Salvador, but not to uh, surfy El Salvador. What were you doing? Not surfing in El Salvador. I can't remember. I think I had like an extended layover and was just cruising around town but yeah it's vague it's a vague memory so it must not have been i must not have done much there's a lot of different spots to surf um even the ones that are known there's a lot but just where we're staying at it's there's a resort it's called punta mango is the spot but the hotel is called hotel los mangos and um then las flores is nearby but just up and down the coast, there's headland after headland after headland with no development, roads that aren't fully built yet, where it just seems like unending potential. The uh, El Salvador, of course, our dear listener will remember, has really built itself or pivoted to being a surf destination. So you're telling me it's working. It totally is. And there's still tons that could still be developed. Apparently... The new president um, had like a PR company mm -hmm. prior to becoming president. And so it was a legitimate rebrand, like fully intentional, fully, you know, uh, designed to just, and it's worked actually. And it, I think it's actually um, driven a lot of business and it's been successful. Like there's family staying at the resort now, whereas they said it used to just be surfers traveling, male surfers traveling by themselves. There's not that same threat of danger anymore. So it's safer for families and stuff. Uh, did, can you buy your pupusas with Bitcoin there? You probably could, but U S currency is also the main currency. If I recall, didn't they make Bitcoin the, one of the national currencies of El Salvador? I wonder how much of it though, was just the PR move. Like that makes a splashy headline, you know, for sure. I mean, I think all of it, which I do believe that the, uh, yeah, president, whatever his name is, <laughs> really sorted out like okay let's do this thing right let's do it slick exactly well um i've got a couple of epiphanies and things to like surfing epiphanies just from surfing six days uh three sessions a day six days straight and then also listeners this is a spit listener trip so scott bass is here but a lot of listeners also listen to the grit so i have some listener feedback for us as well great um Remember we were talking about surfing is easy. We figured out in the last month or two that surfing is not nearly as hard as we thought it was when we uh -oh. were young. Uh-oh, did you have a differing opinion there in El Salvador? Uh, no, it is still easy, but what I affirmed after six days is it's, it's work. Yeah, I mean, surfing is work. It's work. Like, to be decent at it, um, basically you need to kind of stretch you need to rest you know i just thought the first couple of days it's like i'm pretty exhausted okay i'll go rest and just be lethargic lay down let's say turns out laying down does not make you feel great after the fact St you feel stiff after the fact if you've been exercising very hard and then you think oh you know what cracking a cold beer would be really refreshing right now turns out that's detrimental so here we are, day six, three sessions a day, each session's two hours. And it's like, if you have not been doing the work in between, you're surfing at maybe 60% at best, you know? Are you are you having to uh, nutritionally supplement during breaks and stuff? Like eat the right stuff, uh, do the right things, have the right smoothie? 100%. So lean superfood is good i'm like ceviche every day for lunch which is vegetables and fish um a big bowl of fruit with every single meal try to avoid the carbs uh at dinner 
animal protein, vegetables, fruit, stuff like that. Like one night, the menu here is pretty awesome actually. And the food's very good. But one night I got what was the equivalent of like sweet and sour chicken. So it's fried Yum. chicken with like a super sugary thick sauce. It was a gut bomb. And I felt the negative effects, the adverse effects of that in the morning. Did your, was your bottom turn bigger though? Were you throwing more spray? <laughs> it was not, but my belly was bigger. And I felt that while paddling. There's nice. a ton of paddling, you know? So that's the thing. It's like surfing once you're up and riding it, as we discussed previously, listeners can go back and listen to an episode from three weeks ago. If they want to hear that epiphany, it's not nearly as hard as I thought it was for the first 15 years of my life, but paddling is still that's hard like getting you know when there's when it's six feet and it's been like kind of overhead the whole time when it's that much paddling that much duck diving fitness matters man and on day six it really matters how so, is uh your pop-up doing these days after day six i mean i am working hard I, it's fine i'm actually doing it do you need me oh, okay it's uh i surf this morning caught three waves. It was fine. No problems at all. But again, like I said, 60, 65%, which the pop-up lies within that 60 to 65%. I can still do that. You know, it's just, yep. you know, what's not working fast twitch much muscle fibers. Ooh. Yep. So I'm what are you, yeah. What are I'm you riding? Slow twitch, slow twitch program and the slow twitch are about to go on hunger strike actually. Yeah, I mean, and the the slow twitch, I feel though, uh, you need a board for that, David Lee Scales. What are, what board are you writing to to let's just say facilitate the slow twitch? That is the absolute truth. This morning, I was feeling not fully recovered, so I took the six ten, Oren Martin Morning of the Earth boat, basically, because I'm like, I just need the paddle power, and I need to when I do stroke into a wave, I have a little forgiveness getting to my feet. I can go slowly, push up, and just it'll be stable when I get to my feet. I've been riding like a 6'3 shortboard otherwise. And yeah, that's a lot more, a lot less room for forgiveness. Yep. Over the handle. Have you gone over the handlebars? Heck yeah, dude. The thing that's done, the piece of equipment that has proven its worth more than any other piece of equipment has been my leash. Is it stretched you know, it's out? It's just now? like it's gotta be yeah but shout out to devin howard and the boys at channel islands i'm using the hex cord um uh, mikey february model leash and i literally like multiple times have been like okay this is a situation where i could feel this thing pop and it's held together the entire time so plugs holding all of it's holding all of it's holding man the little um, things so that's the surf update the listener update is a number of guys down here on our trip have not washed their hair in years. Great. One of them, eight, eight years. Great. Love to hear it. Love to see it. I mean, it's one thing for us to sit and talk and share wisdom. Uh, it's another thing for people to like do the wisdom. And I guarantee not one of those people, of course, they're still not washing their hair. They have been enlightened. They have now like joined the true and right path and their life is better for it i mean before they mentioned it to me i noticed one of the dudes i was like that guy's got a glorious head of hair yeah and then four days in we're sitting out there waiting for a wave and he goes hey by the way i haven't washed my hair in eight years and i'm like perfect i knew something was yeah and he said I same thing that we've handsome. said is like yeah same thing that we've said where he's like yeah everybody who touches my hair like in terms of a hairstylist or cutting the hair or whatever comments on how healthy my hair is yeah so it's the secret. It's the secret to life. Who needs, and don't let, dear listener, once again, and I feel that this bears repeating, don't let big shampoo dictate your life. Big shampoo and big no. conditioner are co-conspirators to keep you on the hamster wheel of perpetual product. You don't need it. And don't keep, need nothing. Keep, keep shelling out that money too. Yep, yep. Screw For a head of hair that's big a shampoo. fraction as good. Yep. Um. And then also one of the guys came from Jersey and uh, he brought us t-shirts from Sid Abruzzi. He yes. said he went to an event in Rhode Island and Sid was there and he told Sid he was coming down here and Sid's like, no way, I've got t-shirts. So he sent t-shirts for us. 
water bros cannot wait to rep the water bros again my water bros sweater or sweatshirt that i got in uh florida i do believe he gave me one yeah that's right hit, hit the skids just recently so it's time for new water bros merch good and the water bros doc should be coming out in the next few months too so look forward to that sit profile film thank you water bros and then last little note mike from weekend vans is here epic as is mike mike uh i've seen mike now probably two or three times mike strikes me as a quiet ripper he strikes me as one of those dudes who like doesn't maybe isn't the flashiest but is so functional in his surfing as to like have people stop and pay attention it's funny that you say that that's been an interesting assessment on this trip is like the guy who is the most nondescript, like you would never have guessed, you know, rips. and he, I like to a crazy level. And what he was Mike even rips? telling, yeah. Mike surfs good. Yeah. Yeah. And Mike's committed to the life too. Like he's got a, you know, important job plus weekend vans as a side business, uh, family living in the hustle and bustle of Southern California and we were talking yesterday about where does surfing fit in your priority rankings for him. It's three. It's yeah. like family work surfing. surfing. And I'm like, yeah, I'm like, it's okay to deprioritize it for a few years. For me, it's like probably number five on my list of important things. And he's like, no, he's like, I am still trying to improve. He's 42. And he's like, I'm still committed to improving and getting better. And he's like, it's not working, but I still am trying, you know? And I wonder on the scale of like, of course, you know, I think that uh, the swingers call themselves that or they live the lifestyle, right? Are you part of the lifestyle? Uh, and feel surfing is also a lifestyle. I wonder which lifestyle is more difficult to successfully maintain surfing or swinging. <laughs> like both require intense amount of focus and work both require like it being yeah because you <laughs> mike is right if you're surfing is surfing is anything less than three then it is you are receding right there is no you're not even staying uh on a plane and so to and mike's exactly right too to have it at three means it has to be the most important thing in your life other than like the absolute necessities which is family and i mean if surfing is above family, though, I think we see where, where that gets you. If you put surfing above family, then you are Kelly Slater or Taylor. Did you read Taylor's? Which, did you read Taylor's ouchie? I did. Do you, how do you want to discuss that? Well, uh, Beach Grit <laughs> chose not to run it in a, like Derek and I went back and forth and I was actually of the camp that this, this quote should run. This quote should run. And Derek was like, Ugh. Derek felt so bad about it. And I like, yeah, I mean, um, it's all fine and good, but for those who don't know, so on a, uh, recent, what was it? Was it a, uh, oh, the Surfline, a Surfline interview with Kelly Slater, uh, what appeared to be Taylor, his 28 year old daughter, how old is she? Something year old daughter, uh, Sounds got in right. there and, and basically said, yeah, Kelly Slater's heart is made of stone. He was an awful father who hurt me more than he'll ever know. And I hope he's a better father to my young brother. Boom. My she said he's out. still, she said, she said the heart is still stone as well. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but that's what Kelly I, says. I think you have to have a heart of stone to be a competitor. And I yeah. said it on the podcast too. I mean, like again, but back to my, Mike from weekend vans, uh, you'd think obviously it is, you know, family job, whatever surfing, uh, is the surfing can only be three top if you have a family, but then you got people like Kelly Slater who say, nope, it is surfing money family or whatever his organization is. Yeah. I'll get back to Mike from weekend bands. Let's do a dive in, <laughs> into Slater because um, it was really, I loved the interview first of all. And I always laugh when somebody writes can't a candid conversation and I'm just like, yeah, right. Like it's never candid. This was actually very, very good. And Tom Carroll, I, attribute a lot of the success to uh the brothers actually nick carroll was directing and hosting the interview tom carroll was actually on camera interviewing kelly but tom didn't say much they maybe edited out his questions 
But even while he was listening, he was a very active, he was just like nodding and saying, yes, go on. And like prompting Kelly and Kelly divulged. And I know they've been good friends for a long time. So he probably felt comfortable, but Kelly let a lot out, you know, that I hadn't yeah. heard him discuss before. And of course it's in light of his new fatherhood, you know, his new role as a father to a son. And, but he did admit to uh, using plant-based medicine, which we had covered previously. He went down to Rhythmia Resort in Costa Rica, ayahuasca. Did a couple of ayahuasca journeys there. Apparently he's on the board of directors now at yeah. Rhythmia. And, um, and so he seems to be an advocate for it, but he was saying that through that experience, he's kind of come to been forced to reckon with his shortcomings as a father. And especially now that he's uh, becoming a father again, he were, he kind of sacrificed his, you know, relationship with his daughter to achieve his goals that he had set out for himself, exceeded those goals. And now he has a second chance at fatherhood. And it seems that he's in a different phase of life, recognizing the mistakes that he had made in the past and doesn't want to make those mistakes again. Also doesn't need to achieve the same goals that he already did. And so it really seems like a turning point for him in his career. I mean, and that's the thing, like, of course, I mean, what? Yeah, not that it's easy to throw stones at somebody's poor parenting, but I suppose that it is relatively easy to throw those stones. Uh, and over at Kelly, though, I mean, yeah, like I think he he's probably, you know, not that you would think, oh, yeah, being a bad father is a, is cool and good on you, Kelly. Uh, but I mean, great. We've talked about this on this program. Greatness comes at a cost, I think. And that's often the cost. I think if you look at anybody who's really achieved, like from, you know, whatever, Lance Armstrong to, I don't know, people who are like driven crazy, right? Driven, driven, driven to be the best. I think rarely do you see, oh, they're all their relationships are, yeah, they're like filled with healthy relationships and their lives are, you know, full in other ways, which I wonder in the darkness of the dark, if the Kelly Slaters and, you know, whoever, like the goats of the world, when the lights go out, think, yes, I did it. I'm a goat. And that feels real good. Or if they, if the lights go out and they think, you know, I did it. Yes. Uh, but the cost was extremely high. I don't know if it was worth it. I wonder that too. And while I heard remorse in him through that interview, I did not hear regret. Yeah. <laughs> Which I think is true right? also that, yeah. And I think that, you know, the word narcissism gets thrown around way too often. Uh, but I do believe that in order to be the best, what makes them the best, and I've been around enough of very, very exceptional athletes, courtesy of wife's phenomenal roster. And there's like, you have to put yourself first. You have to put your training first. You have to put your nutrition first. You have to put yourself first in front of everyone. You have to place yourself at the front of the line every time if you want that kind of stuff to happen. Uh, there's no like humble. I mean, there is, there's like the humble, everybody loves dude, right? That guy's never the best. Like you're what, I mean, who's a, who's yeah. a surfer that people just uh, love to hang out with and talk about. And you know, like you're what, uh, my favorite surfer from Australia. Uh, what did I always forget his name? Beautiful Ryan, Ryan Callahan. Ryan Callahan. Yeah. Like that dude's never going to win a title ever. You know, if he does, it'll be a straight accident. It'll be a CJ Hobgood accident. CJ Hobgood won a title accidentally. Like you don't win if you're like, and look at even Idolo, right? Like Idolo seemed like fun loving dude until he started winning. And then you realize, oh wait, no, Idolo is a elbowing people out of the way. He is a me first, which again, there's, that's what you got to do. And so I'm sure Kelly narcissistic me first would be a horrible father to his daughter. And now, yeah, he gets a, he gets another shot where he gets to be present, I guess. So good on Kelly to having his cake and eating it too. I mean, it is a good, it's a, for him in terms of the trajectory of his life, it is a great opportunity for him to be able to have done both things. It's unfortunate for his daughter, of course, to be the, um, the victim in this circumstance, you know, the casualty for sure. Um, it should be stated, though, you referenced the comment that was left on the YouTube channel. Anybody can create a profile and create any name they want. So there's no evidence that it is his daughter's actual comment. I, I did a bit of a bit of a dive on it, and I think it is his daughter. 
I mean, how much, uh, d- how much of a dive could you go do that? Well, I mean, I clicked, I did, I dove enough into her YouTube profile, which it didn't just start. It's been that Taylor Slater has been her YouTube channel for, you know, since 2017 or something like that. And so I don't know why somebody okay. would be pretending to be Kelly's and there was nothing much more there. Right. So it wasn't a, it wasn't like, Oh, somebody just started this to say this thing. Right. I mean, it, it felt legitimate. Yeah. And it, can you hear my text message pings coming through by the way? Nope. Okay, good. Um, and the other thing is, uh, it was deleted. Yeah. It was posted. It was only probably live for a few hours and then it was deleted. So, um, somebody, yeah. Anyways. I mean, either Surfline deleted went, it or she deleted it. Exactly. Yeah. Somebody asked for it to be deleted or she got wise to it. Anyways, it was interesting. I appreciate Kelly's insights. And uh, I think the biggest takeaway here is just that he's in a different phase of his career. We should not expect to see him surfing many more events on tour, which we probably weren't anyways. But this is an actual catalyst for him to have a new kind of passion to chase in his life, I guess. Sure. And and I guess like these kinds of things, when these you know sorts of things come up, uh, it always makes me pause and say anybody, you know, I've caught a lot of flack. You have too, I think for leave Kelly alone kind of stuff over the years. Yeah. My response is always, why, why do you care? Like Kelly Slater is probably a friggin' asshole. Like, I mean, I don't know what else to say. Like you shouldn't lionize it. We can lionize him for his skill all day and the, and insight into, you know, what it takes to be great. And, but again, like as a person, He's a, probably a big old jerk and was a obviously a massive jerk. Like to be a absentee father, there's not a lot that's inexcusable, even on the path to greatness. That's that's pretty much inexcusable. So he made an inexcusable mistake, and you know I don't know to forgive him that. I mean for sure it's not me or you to forgive him, but uh, yeah I don't know people who like just because you're great at a skill does not mean you're great at a person. Yeah, it does not absolve you from shortcomings in other ways. Yep. Factormeals.com slash surf 50. Let me tell you, Factor Meals has filled a specific gap in our lives that has simplified our busy schedules and satisfied and nourished us. If you follow me on social media, you know that I love to cook. My wife and I love food and wine, but there are still at least five meals a week where we're just underprepared, short on time, and don't wanna make a bad dietary decision, nor sacrifice the pleasure that we get out of dining. Factor has solved it. Chef prepared meals that are delivered to your house weekly. They take two minutes to heat up and they're designed to be eaten anywhere. There's no prep, no cooking, and you can recycle the package that it comes in. Delicious meals that are good for you with over 35 options to choose from each week. Go to factormeals.com slash surf 50. Less expensive than dining out. More delicious, more nutritious. Factormeals.com slash surf 50. Follow up from a listener. Finally, the grid has come to its penultimate apex. And there is no doubt that you and Chaz reference to Seinfeld, that your reference to Seinfeld and Curb Your Enthusiasm last week has brought the show to another level. My wife has mused that many of your most controversial topics, such as men dyeing their hair, kissing your children on the mouth, and too many others are Seinfeld-like. Keep up the laughs. Soon you will be in syndication. Kyle. It's exactly, exactly what the networks are looking for. (laughs) <laughs> is is another show fronted by two white men talking about various niggling little problems they encounter through the day and giving great advice. Um, the funny thing is, I we brought that up last week, and it's like our topics aren't pulled from their storylines, and they're often not the exact same topics that are in their storylines, but it we are so heavily influenced that it's as if we are you know, it's just, it informs our life. Those storylines and the way their way of thinking is now our way of thinking. And we see the world through that lens. I mean, having, having grown up with Seinfeld, like, and remember how revolutionary Seinfeld was when it came out a show about nothing. Uh, but you know, I don't know, just realizing or in life, like it is the tiny little 
details that are the funniest things, right? Or the most totally. like, what do you do? Like, and that's what you're thinking about 90% of the day is your mind, you know, on the freeway, getting furious at people driving slow in the fast lane or whatever, you know, just your daily little, the daily little things uh, that make life life. But yeah, Seinfeld focused on those as the centerpiece. That is what this show has become. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. The little things, you know, the little um, things like being little things like father. sparkling water. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, speaking of sparkling water, did you get any feedback or new insights since last week? On, um, uh, oh, uh, from, uh, on recommended. Sparkling? No, did you? Mine was my feed was dead there. I got lots. Um, What'd you get? People are sending in recommendations. Well, people are sending in recommendations that uh, for brands that we just don't have access yeah. to. So, so that was a problem. But one of them that apparently is at Trader Joe's is German. It's Gerald Steiner. Oh yeah, I've I've had Gerald Steiner before. That's in the tall green bottle. Gerald Steiner though, I, I think it's, it's a, a really one. good one. Oh, it is, is it a clear one? Maybe okay. it's a clear one. You're right. It's with a white label. I think label. it's a clear bottle with like a blue blue and white label. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but that one, if I recall, uh, the bubbles, and now I'm going to have to go back and try it. I don't want to speak out of turn about a beautiful German product, but I feel the bubbles weren't quite right. It wasn't quite snappy enough. Hmm. It was almost okay. flat. All right. Well, I've seen it before. I've never had it. So I'm going to go revisit that one. But people have strong opinions about their sparkling water preferences. Right. I mean, we we should, What what's the, uh, was there, sorry, a consensus favorite amongst the texts or messages? The consensus was that Topo Chico is definitely not the best and yeah. that it actually has forever chemicals in it that are harmful for you and that uh, we're blowing it by recommending it. Yeah, I didn't. I was just shocked. I mean, that's what keeps the bubbles together. That's what keeps the bubbles forever is it's forever chemicals. That's why now it makes sense that you could leave it out on a counter and come to it 10 days later and it'd still be fizzy. Well, moving on to uh, more surf news. I don't know. This is this would have been a big news story a couple of years ago, but we'll Do just you even include care? it here because we've been tracking it. I really don't care. This is the thing. And for, Do you want me to th- read? Let me read the headline and then you determine how much we talk about it or not. Have at. Okay, quote. Weird and unnecessary wait over as World Surf League taps video game exec as new CEO, exclamation point. It's a good headline when I hear it back. It really captures, I feel, my complete ambivalence to the thing. And also the like ambivalence that everyone should have about it. So yeah, World Surf League has a new CEO after... A weird and unnecessary wait. Why did did they, you know, Eric Logan got fired almost a year to, year ago. Uh, now, like, no, not just fired, went to Brazil, didn't come home. The tersest press release ever. Eric, Lo- Eric Logan is no longer with the company. Uh, so fired brutally for cause. Did something yeah. naughty, naughty, naughty. Uh, out. And then the uh, interim CEOs hung on there. Why didn't, if you're just going to get another boring, like this guy to me is peak boredom. Like, are you kidding me? Like, okay. So you're, you went and I mean, yeah, the beach grit comments were the best just because people actually deep dove into his LinkedIn and stuff. He's never had a job, held a job for longer than two years, you know, anywhere. Like he just goes Netflix, two years, whatever his thing is. It's just the classic world surf league. Nothing's going to change his passion for the sport doesn't matter. None of it matters. This guy is a place holding kook. Uh, and I don't even have the energy to go interview him. Like when Elo came around, you and I went and got our lunches served to us by Eric Logan way back then. This guy, like, I guess if you want to call me up and I'll try to fit you in, bro. But otherwise I do not, I literally know everything you think already and do not care. Totally agree. Or anything that you don't know that he thinks is not going to revolutionize or even correct the mistakes that they've made or affect their business in a meaningful way unless he puts the best surfers in the best waves full stop. I mean, which and this this guy, is not yeah. what his plan is. No, he is he feels to be a real uh placeholder CEO while they get the sale done. Somebody uh commented in Beach yeah. Grit like They are, yeah, I think it was maybe Comturan, can't remember, uh, who said, 
uh, yeah, basically they're waiting for the Olympics to come to, you know, for the spike in interest in surfing worldwide and then sell the thing. I've been saying that for a while as well, but the, it really feels like this is no, okay, we're bringing somebody in because we're going to radically make this thing better, or we're going to just really fix it. We're going to, you know, bring somebody from surf. I mean, imagine how different you or I would have felt if they said, you know, Pat O'Connell or whatever, you know, he was there, but we're bringing him back. But this time as CEO, like we're giving a real surfer with a real reputation and a real like passion for this thing. We're giving him the reins. Nope. We're giving again, a mid to low mid tier entertainment esque executive the keys again like eric logan was at least president of oprah's studios this dude is like a uh head of development or like he's even like way lower down than eric like they're yeah. drawing from a worse and worse linkedin pool for this job and this guy again weird unnecessary don't care good night yep totally agree um we've they've really really uh starched all the interest from anything that they're doing from watching the events to the inner workings of the organization those of us who cared the absolute most we can't even muster the interest at this point no i mean a new ceo so. uh the only thing you know, I'll be excited to take his scalp, to be honest. I mean, to add his scalp to the belt of, and so I, but it's going to be hard for me. And I would like the listener to know that when people talk about the work, this is going to be work. I'm going to have to go into the salt mines to get this guy fired because I really don't care about him, but I'm going to have to muster reserves of energy that I didn't think I had. I'm going to have to wake up and eat ceviche and make sure not to crack that cold beer. I'm going to have to keep myself in peak condition to get this guy fired. This will help you right here. Thankfully, drinkag1.com slash surf. And I'm going to lean, I lean on it always. Every morning I lean on it to get me through the day. Here on out until whatever his name is. I can't even be bothered to remember his name. That's how lame this guy is. I didn't even it's look. Yeah, yeah, it's like I Brady like... or something dumb. Joe Quinn. What's his name? I don't even know. Don't care. But yeah, I'm going to um, have to really do the work here. Number of people on this trip in the last 48 have gotten a little bit of a stomach bug, you know, like spending a bit of time in the bathroom. We're trying to determine what it was that maybe they ate, maybe they drank. We can't figure out the exact detail. Other than all I know is I've been drinking my AG1 every morning and I've no had problem. zero issues throughout. Of course, of course. Uh, the wife came down the other day. Oh, speaking of, I need to request more AG1.com slash surf from the makers of gotcha. AG1.com slash surf. When I get low, oh man, the terror starts like the, the threat of disease starts knocking on the door. But anyway, the other day, Wife comes down, I'm drinking my ag1.com slash surf. I mean, my drink ag1.com slash surf. And uh, she stops and says, you know, I'm really glad that you do this because it makes me know that every day you are getting the nutrition you need. It was like a drink ag1.com slash surf advertisement right there in my kitchen. An earnest, heartfelt from the wife to drink ag1.com slash surf. Like, thank you. For because otherwise she knows me. She, who knows what the day would look like? Who knows what what horrible corners I would turn? Where I would end up? Don, forget about it. We're back. We're back. Oh, you froze right there, but we're back. Sorry about that. Squarespace is the all-in-one website platform that is designed for entrepreneurs to stand out and succeed online. Whether you're just starting out or managing a growing brand, Squarespace makes it easy to create a beautiful website, engage with your audience, and sell anything from products to content to subscriptions. They have flexible templates with designs for every category, templates that are simple to drag and drop your artwork or logos into, but flexible enough to redesign to your specs. They have online store templates that make it easy to sell physical merchandise, 
digital or service products like podcast subscriptions and paywalled content. They even make customizable merch. You can design products and they will handle the production, inventory, and the shipping and handling. So let Squarespace handle it for you. They'll save you time. They'll save you money. And we'll save you money by going to squarespace.com slash surf. You get a free trial and you get 10% off your first purchase. Squarespace.com slash surf. Enjoy. Moving on, more surf news. This is kind of... All right, can you hear me? I got you. I got you back now. Okay, cool. I just got the message saying it was unstable. Um, in other surf news, there's a number of Instagram posts flying around that I'll just bundle under the headline of updates from the surf product world. Hurley and Costco, Hurley and Quicksilver are now at Costco for ridiculously low pricing. Um, they're obviously their clothing. Folding surfboards are making, <laughs> taking over Instagram. I'm seeing those advertising everywhere over the place. I mean, that right there, I'm so thankful when I, they started trickling in a couple weeks ago, the folding surfboards. And I remember the folding surfboard, uh, not that it was ever a trend or anything, but I remember seeing folding surfboards ads in surfboard magazines, like the back quarter little ones, the small ones of, Hey, you know, so it's bummers, board baggage fees, bloody, you know, whatever. It's the same kind of bull crap. Or you there. could swap out the tail shape back then. It was like yeah. you can get a swallow tail or swap yeah. it out for the thruster when you want to ride the thruster. So all of it's so dumb. And very clearly you look, anyone who has ever surfed more than 20 times looks at that and says, that, does, that doesn't work. Like the, whatever, even if you're a crappy surfer, uh, the hinges and the bulk of something of having something fold you, at best you're going to be able to go straight on that thing you're not going to be able to do anything ever and that's why they were not popular but val explosion val doesn't know that val hasn't been surfing enough to know val probably thinks look at this this is what i've been waiting for so what we're going this is going to lead to i feel is going to be perfection the folding surfboard will come back and essentially destroy the val population they'll all get them good they will all like surfing will become so lame and horrible for them riding these crappy things that they'll give up entirely so thank you folding surfboards that's what i predict a valless future thanks to folding surfboards what's crazy to me is that the sport got so val in the last three years maybe since COVID, i guess that 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 company thought there was even a need for this. Like never once in my, I don't know what, 25 years of surfing at this point, did I ever think I needed my surfboard to fold. No. I needed a lot of things in my surfing. Never once did I think I need a surfboard to fold. But for some reason in some segment of the population, which is probably living in a metropolis, maybe don't own your own car. You're taking a taxi or something to the beach. Like, I don't even know where it that's, would that's land. That's one of the, one of the advertisements. That's a need. Yeah. One of the advertisements I saw was some dude in New York city. And that was like a testimonial of like, it was hard, you know, but okay. Here's the thing though. If the folding surfboard is not the answer, if back to weekend vans, Mike, and where you play surfing on your hierarchy, uh, you struck like surfing is, a sacrifice or requires sacrifice. Not everything is easy. So I don't know. You, you got to get an Uber if you live in New York city and like a XL Uber and get to the beach or whatever. Like, I don't, it's so hard. Sorry. It's like stuff is hard with surfing. It's hard to do. It's not all foldable it's, surfboards and happiness. No, exactly. It's crazy. Um, on the flip side of that kind of kooky products, the John John Florence hooded rash guard with UV protection is the uniform down here. You would think that our hotel distributes them as a mandatory uniform to the surfers. Everybody who came on this trip, that's what they're wearing. Everybody else in the lineup from other places, that's what they're wearing. It is like completely um, omnipresent. It's funny when a product is introduced like that and you're like, Initially, my first thought of seeing the Instagrams with John John wearing it, I'm like, Ugh, that's unattractive. But it's one of those things that works so good. And then you're just like, how did somebody not do this years ago? Check, check, check. Back. Yeah, yeah this is um, the power is still off. What's up? 
the power's still off, but I've got a new internet connection from a different source. So I think we're okay. Is it from weekendvans.com? I wish. Um, so what were you, I would mention the Florence being ubiquitous down here. What were you saying? Oh, it's one of those things like that pop up every while, every once in a while. The first time I saw it, I remember the, I think it was on Instagram seeing John John in it and thinking, oh, that's hideous. But like, I guess good for John John. He's like always in the sun and you know, like he's either sailing or he's surfing, like he's in the sun 24 hours a day. So that is important for him. Uh, and then, yeah, the times that I've been, uh, where was I recently? I was in, are you there? That's one too. Got you. Let's try again. Do you want to give yes. me the Florence spiel again? I don't I'm scared. I'm scared. I, all I was going to say, it's one of those things that comes around that you think that seems dumb. And then you see it everywhere and you realize it has a total purpose and then are shocked that it wasn't invented earlier. Okay. So the total purpose could be entirely true, but you just need somebody cool to validate it because that product had been on the market from other brands for a long time, but it looked like a kooky dad would wear it, you know, and then John John wears it. And all of a sudden that's all it takes because it's incredibly functional. Good enough for John John. Good enough for me. They John John Florence should make bumper stickers that say, if it's good enough for John John, it's good enough for me. Exactly. We have to guess what will the next John John product be that we never would have saw coming. Like, what does he validate next that would be the kookiest thing up until he wears it? I'm going to say he's going to bring back, and Florence, the brand, is going to bring back the Reef bottle opening sandal. Mm, I've got one. Tell me. Surf leggings. Ooh, for sure, for men. Surf leggings for men. hes I mean, that's all he's going to do. He's going to turn the hooded surf shirt thing into a pantsuit so that when i was talking about um unassuming surfers on this trip this dude shows up from santa barbara totally unassuming tells me that he got surf leggings on amazon and he goes i know they're kooky but you know i just want the sun protection and i'm just looking at him kind of you know like okay whatever we'll see he is shredding like in his surf leggings. he doesn't in his surf leggings with a hood and everything else like fully covered. It looks like he's wearing a full suit with a hood. Uh, and uh, doesn't care, doesn't care and just dominates. Should we beat Florence to the punch and do grit surf leggings? Who's going to validate them for us? Uh, we, uh, Iowa belly. We'll go back to the well. <laughs> Yeah, that that would be the only option because you and I can't pull it off. That's no, the we can't. But I feel I feel in influencer town in the day and age of paid posts, we could find somebody. That's like the least of our worries. We just need to make a legging. Is it is it lycra? Is it the same exact material as his John John Florence hooded surf shirt? I think okay. so. Yeah. Normalizing, yeah. And what we need to do uh, is people just need to wear this legging, the surf legging. Uh, it can't just be for trips. You got to wear your surf legging around town and stuff. I mean, you got to like go to Cardiff Reef in your surf legging and just hang out and then go for a surf and then go get something to eat at Fish 101 in your surf legging. I'm going to, I got to figure that's out the, that's sourcing. That's the, that's the exact opposite. That then makes it uncool. But um, this guy on our trip actually mentioned that Nathan Florence was wearing what looked like surf leggings at cloud break when he got that macking wave, like two or three weeks ago. And so maybe it is a product that's in development already. Well, I'm going to, I do think that we need to beat Florence to the punch here. Okay. Maybe we can Let's co-brand with Florence, a grit okay. Florence co-branded surf legging. I like it. I'm, I'm um, Pat all up. Do you want a pros in the wild story? Sure do. Cool. I've got a really good um, listener inquiry that he needs our feedback on, but I'm going to save it for next week just because we're dealing with the internet issues here. So maybe go for an abbreviated show, but this pros in the wild is pretty solid. Great. Listener, listener writes in and says, I can't remember the exact year, but it was during the Kelly and Andy rivalry era. 
my girlfriend and I decided to fly over to Hawaii to watch the Pipe Masters. When the contest was called on, we headed to the beach early in hopes of getting the perfect spot to watch. Anybody who's ever been to Pipe knows that the original Volcom House is as good as it gets in terms of vantage point. Being tourists as we were, the best we could do was plop down on the beach about five yards in front of it as we started or as we stared out to the ocean, watching all the pros warm up and the spectator crowd thicken. A friendly couple carrying their all day beach gear walked past us and set up camp right behind our spot. The couple was Tony and Tammy Moniz. They were now between us and the Volcom House right next to the property. As the contest began and the day moved on, the Volcom House got packed. The patio and the front lawn were full of people. Every North Shore heavy hitter was there. This was obviously during the time of the Wolf Pack, and them and all of their friends were at the house getting loose when Kelly Slater's heat happened to hit the water. The grumblings from the lawn started straight away. It was clear there was nobody on Team Kelly standing on that property. During the heat, Slater fell behind, and he needed a pretty decent score to make it through in, in the dying minutes. As was commonplace in those days, he took off on a backdoor closeout, raced it, and got got blown out down the line for the score that he needed. When the score was announced, the crowd on the beach let out a huge roar of approval. Well, not all of the crowd. As the roar settled, the folks at the Volcom House started booing and shouting various things to let them let people know their disappointment. There was one man on the beach that didn't appreciate it very much, and it wasn't Slater. Tony Moniz stood up, turned around to face the house, and he yelled, Hey! Knock it off. He's the champ. He earned it. Keep in mind, he did this from about three feet away from the front lawn. It wasn't like somebody mumbling something from the safety of anonymity within the roar of the crowd. You've never seen a bigger group of rowdy tough guys go completely silent so fast. It was crazy. I don't even know if Tony Moniz was a huge fan of Kelly's. He wasn't sitting there cheering for him during the heat. I think he just didn't like the sportsmanship or lack thereof that was on display from the Wolf Pack and their friends. Regardless, one thing that was made extremely clear was that there was a definitive food chain in Hawaii and Tony Moniz was far higher up than anybody at the Volcom house that day. Work. I love it. That is one of my favorite pros in the wild. The Moniz family, of course, are like living legends, gifts to us all. Uh, but that, I mean, the observation, which is, and I, I would hope the North shore still has at least some of this. Uh, but yeah, like the, you know, I wrote a whole stinking book about it, but the hierarchy is what makes that place so fun, right? Is cause you would think, yes, Wolfpack, Volcom house tip top, but absolutely not. That's just like the ground floor of when you're really going to start getting into, okay, now we have the legends, right? We have the hose, we have the Monizes, we have like on and on and the and like i remember hearing a uh story uh shoot i don't know if i should share but uh, uh it was somebody a very 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 noble hawaiian like of the noble lineage uh when eddie rothman was building his house the dude would shoot his lights out with a bb gun and just laugh where that's what that's what a yeah like you would think eddie rothman tip tip top but no there is people much higher up that and that's what makes the north shore so great that's what i mean honestly the north shore is just a microcosm of um a hunter and gatherer society you know where there's a limited resource and you it serves the community to have a hierarchy and to work for that in uh, concert with one another for that resource and um but it's one of the only that still exists in that raw way in the modern world anyways i mean it's so great too that the tony monizes and the the you know whatever the hose like the tip top bros don't have to go punch teeth out like they but not that they wouldn't it's not like people you know that everybody's like oh whatever, you know, these guys aren't rough or can't hold their own. They totally could. They just don't need to. Like, you are, yeah, you've got the respect. Well, what I like about it is that um, the wolf pack recognizes, you know, like, because it would be easy for one of the wolf pack, young, brash 22-year-olds to try to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Tony. 
but that's not what it's about. They understand the hierarchy as well. So yep. it's good to see. It's Great. good to see all the way around. Love it. Thank you for the Spro in the Wild submission. Yeah. And that also, last week we were talking about, um, I think it was Jay Martinez, the surf shop in the wild story about him getting checked by the employee who deflated his ego. You know, yeah. like, hey, kid, put your board down. We all know you surf. Yeah. I got a, I got another couple of emails of similar stories. And one was about a skate shop kid who had a similar experience. Him and his buddies just lounging around the skate shop. Like they just wanted to be amongst the scene in there, but they would never buy anything and they'd clog it up. And at some point the owner had to be like, Hey kids beat it. Like if you're yeah. not going to buy anything, beat it. And he was like, that was a lesson that I needed to know. Like, yeah. this is a place of commerce. I can't, when I'm a kid, my parents accommodate my every whim. And I think that, you know, that's the way life is. No, it's not that way. And it's okay. Somebody needs to check you. And like you said, they don't need to be rude about it or punch you in the face or anything like that. But you do need these little ego deflating checks just so that you can function in society. So true. So true. All right. Well, I have a couple of barrel or gnaws that we can discuss probably in length. So let's go to commercial break and then we'll come back. Barrel or not. Rocketmoney.com slash surf. Just this week, my wife figured out she was paying a subscription for Showtime, but then also paying for Paramount Plus, which includes Showtime for free. That's precisely what Rocket Money was designed for. A modern tool that meticulously tracks the details that we easily get distracted from. It's a finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your monthly spending, and helps you lower your bills. It gives you freedom by helping you see your subscriptions in a simple dashboard and alerts you about hidden fees or increases. Rocket Money has over 5 million users and has helped save its members an average of $720 a year with over $500 million in canceled subscriptions. Stop wasting money on things that you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash surf. Calm the clutter in your head, simplify the tedium of your financial life, and find freedom through rocketmoney.com slash surf. Chaz Smith, welcome back. Barrel or not. Nah. Can I push that door closed a little bit just so the beeping? Thank you so much. Um, all right, we're back with Barrel or Not, Chaz. Excited. Ready for it. Straight off of Bad Boy Rai Rai's Instagram poll this morning. I don't know if you saw it. I didn't. Red wine and Coke. And by Coke, I mean Coca-Cola, mixing the two liquids. I know they do this in certain places. Is this a... Is, is it a Central American? Is it? I've European? seen it in. I've seen Spain? it in Spain. Yeah, they are. They are currently at Margaret River, and it was Kelly Slater and he imbibing together. So it's probably a, you know, inexpensive Australian Shiraz with Coca Cola. Oh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna have to go no barrel, David Lee Scales. I like to explore, you know, and I like gross things too. Let's be honest. I mean, I have never met a Hostess product that I didn't just thoroughly enjoy so this is not about a highbrow kind of thing uh and i'm i am speaking ignorantly i've never had it i've had coke and coffee before that was okay like it's some things are just so dominantly that that you can try to dabble but it's not going to become like ooh, you know you know what's really good i mean and i've had that with other things like i think coke and coffee specifically what it was like coke and coffee and cream or something it was like a real yeah it was some, I'm un, unfamiliar with that can't remember where it was it was the same kind of thing though right like it was an actual thing it was like on the menu served and you have it and you think oh that's good that's fine but you'll never have it again right like yeah. it's those tastes are so dominant i think red wine and coke have a whole giant lane all to themselves and you can mix it and it might be okay but if you do that if that is your drink oh, i'm a coke and wine guy you're a straight weirdo. That's true. I'm going to, I'm giving this a barrel. Um, but you're still right in that this isn't like, there wouldn't be a restaurant that puts this on the menu and this is what they're known for or anything yeah. like that. And like Coke serves a purpose by itself and wine serves a purpose by itself. But I was in a scenario a while back where I had 
I opened a bottle of, it was actually Syrah. So similar probably to what Kelly and uh, Ryan were drinking. Big, ripe. It was too ripe for me. It was just like, oh, this is so intense. But it's a decent wine. It's just not the style of wine I wanted that night. And the next day, so I didn't dump it out. But the next day, I still had most of that bottle. And for lunch, I had a brisket sandwich. And I was like, I'm going to go for the Coke and wine thing because I've seen it before. I just had never tried it. So I mixed and I was ready for a little booze that day. I mixed Coke and that big Syrah chilled. It was amazing. And like with amazing. that sandwich, with that sandwich, like the harmony of it with that sandwich, it was fantastic. Did you and pour then, yourself a second glass? Well, I finished the sandwich and then I had a second glass by my by itself without without the sandwich because it was that good. The, uh, I mean, but so will you go back though? That's the real question. Will you go back to the well here as it were? That was, that was a year ago and I haven't gone back since. That's what I'm saying. See, there's these things and that's the exact same way I felt with that Coke coffee cream, whatever that thing was. I remember it. Can't remember it specifically, but remember thinking that's really good and never yeah. doing it again. So yeah. if you don't ever do it again, was it really good is the, is the question. I know there was a moment in time where it was incredible but I don't know but if that you that's don't go replicable. back and it's all, yeah. it's stuff that's easy. It's not like, oh man, you know, it's too bad. They don't sell big fruity, cheap red wines and Coke at every single store everywhere. Like, I mean, right. it's one of those things that'd be easier than easy. And if you really thought it was good, you'd probably think you try to be like clever at one point and roll it out to a dinner party. You've never done that. Have you? I would never. That's the thing is it's never, it's never it's rarely the best option. That one day it happened to be the best option, but for nine out of 10 lunches, you know, if you want to drink wine, rosé is great or white wine's great or whatever. This was just one where it was like the same. I wanted red wine, but I also wanted something refreshing and bubbly and chilled. And so the combination of the two uh, was it. Uh, but if I was in, if I was in Spain where it is known, I would definitely retry it there. Uh, on Bad Boy Rai Rai's Insta, were he and Kelly both doing this? Yeah. He and Kelly were drinking Coke and red wine. Here's the thing about Kelly. Uh, I trust Kelly as much as I trust my bro's three-year-old son to tell me what tastes good. Like I did Kelly's palate in my mind is juvenile, silly, and pointless. I think this might've been Rai Rai. Rai Rai is the wine drinker. So I think this might've been him talking Kelly into doing it. For sure. And, and I get that. I'm just Kelly involved in this menage a trois, as it were. Yeah. Uh, Kelly, I bet is such a, like has such a dumb palate as to shock the mind. I mean, for he does all his, you know, acai smoothie type of whatever nutritional things. But I get when I bet when Kelly sits down and has what he thinks is a good meal, you look at it and I bet it's entirely idiotic not that it's gross it's just like i bet it's dumb pairings of stuff like he's had famous chef friends i'm sure try to tell him what to do and i bet kelly tries to replicate it in some asinine way that completely doesn't work i bet it's much more based on sustenance and like um what he's putting in his body than it is on flavor but for sure kelly slater is an i've never seen kelly slater not be an expert on everything right like right so yeah, he yeah. for sure thinks that he's like foodie like subtle foodie king also and i bet it's entirely annoying i bet it's like his choices because anybody who thinks they're an expert at something uh it's already like you know kind of annoying uh people who think they're expert foodies or have great taste or those people are peak annoying you either are or you aren't right like the yeah. difference between like one of a food critic and average guy on the street or worse food critic. And the person who thinks they're a food critic is like, I am a better surf coach than that person is a, you know, a, a food critic. All right. Well, we've got another, <laughs> uh, food related drink related barrel or not coming off of last week, David and Chaz, your recent sparkling water conversation got me thinking. So I would like to pose this question barrel or not lime in your beer oh i'm a gnaw on this thank you very much and i know that it is conducive for coronas for tacatis for you know i'm sure what's the what's the beer and 
El Salvador? Uh, somebody, they're drinking like Suprema or something okay. like that. Whatever it is. But yeah, like, you know, for a light, uh, like Latin American beer, but I still don't like yeah. it. Like, uh, and I will, Corona's gross. Let's just be frank. I do not understand why Australians love Corona. It's insane yeah. to me. Corona does not taste good. Let's just no. leave that there. Uh, and so I guess trying to mask it with lime, but then you have, it just tastes like more gross. I feel I'm yeah. not a lime and beer man. Yeah. Neither am I. Um, there's, I guess I don't drink that much beer anymore anyways, but like there's certain beers that it works better in like lager, Mexican lager, it works better in, but I would prefer it without. Um, so we're both going, nah, this listener continues and says, I have a theory that may shed some light on the practice and might in fact change your mind. He said in the nineties, I spent quite a bit of time camping at the rustic Palapa camp on a quote secret point break in mainland Mexico. Once a week, the beer truck would come down to the beach and stock up the little lady's uh, kitchen shack. He would unload cases of bottles and take back the old empty bottles. Back then, they just refilled those bottles. Sometimes the painted on logos would be so worn that you could only tell the brand of beer by the shape of the bottle. He would also drop off giant blocks of ice. The beer would go into the cooler and the old man would take an ice pick and chip up the ice onto the beer. Of course, everything was on the honor system. You get a beer, mark it on the sheet, grab your... Uh, little half of a lemon wedge or lime wedge, lemon, which was a little smaller than a golf ball and scrub the top of your beer. You see that ice was not made with purified water, just good old Mexican tap water. So the lime killed the germs from the ice. And I believe that's where that tradition comes from. Surfers acquired a taste for it and brought it home with them. I, and again, I totally figured it was, there was some practical reason to the practice yeah. Uh, doesn't make me like it any better, but that makes, that makes me like it more is rubbing it on the rim rather than squeezing the juice into the beer itself Yeah, or, or yeah. Jamming your whole wedge into the beer, which then clogs the neck of the bottle and you yeah. get some weird gulping thing. Then you got to jam your finger down the neck. It's all, all of that becomes disgusting. Yeah. Yep. So, but that's an interesting little tidbit. I wonder if it's actually entirely the reason how, or the way that that trend started. Unfortunately, uh, there's beer companies around here. I think Stone does one where they have a, a beer, a Mexican lager that's flavored uh, lime and salt flavored beer. Ugh. Weird. Not that's the cool. other thing is beer should taste like beer. I don't it's need beer. grapefruit beer or anything different. No flavors in it. Just beer is good. Somebody does. I think it's the World Surf League advertises a fruit and beer. It's like the fruit juice and beer. It's the thing you've been looking for. Well, no. Unless John John Florence starts to drink it, I don't want nothing to do with it. Wasn't looking for a folding surfboard. Wasn't looking for a fruit beer. A fl fl fruit beer, right. Was looking for a Coke and red wine. Yeah. <laughs> um, actually wasn't, but okay. Final one comes from Ryan, who's one of our listeners here on this surf, uh, who came on this surf trip. He was lamenting about something this morning. I shouldn't even give you that much information. Barrel or not. Nah. Sending a gift to someone without attaching your name. Oh, uh, I'm going to go no barrel because herein is the thing. It's great to be uh, out of the goodness of your heart to do things, right? Not to do it for praise or adulation for anyone to even know. The problem is you put a burden on the recipient of the gift of like, Oh, you know, where did this come from? And that's kind of can be a fun game, but also wow, how do I thank the, you know, like, who is it? How? And so all of a sudden now this gift comes with burden. You don't want to like the burdensome gift is never cool to receive or give, right? When you give like, Hey buddy, I'm going to give you this super old car that needs all kinds of maintenance all the time you're gonna this thing is going to be your life if i'm giving it to you isn't that cool no that's the exact problem nowadays we've had full like intense detective sessions in our house trying to figure out who sent a particular gift and it's like well did you text your parents yeah of course did you text yours yeah but they haven't replied yet well okay well in that interim i texted eight friends like and then it's it's literally 30 or 40 minutes trying to figure out who sent this gift. Yep. And 
it's not the sender is never just I'm going to anonymously send a gift and like send them on this vision quest. It's they, it was a oversight. It was yes. a, they were lazy and forgot to put their name on it. Or they just presumed that we would, that know, you would know that they're it's, the ones who would send us this gift. And it's like, no, it only creates pure chaos in our household. The ones I've gotten, it, you're exactly right. If somebody forgot, they ordered something from Amazon that gets shipped out. Uh, and the, like the assumption is it's so obvious that this came from me. And right. then I'm like, well, okay. I mean, now that you said it, it, it's, I guess obvious, but it was so far from obvious for the last two weeks that I've been wondering where this thing came from. Yeah. Like I'll not usually go on the hamster wheel of where did it come from? I'll just think, okay, here's this thing. Uh, I don't know. And then a couple weeks later, you know, inevitably you'll get the, Oh, did you get my thing? Right. And, we'll, and oh. why do you, and then there's always a little bit of guilt with that too, of like, Hey, never heard from you. Like precisely like, shaming you as if you didn't send a thank you card. Because if somebody, if somebody is saying, did you get my thing automatically in that it's laden with, why didn't you thank me for the thing? Exactly. Yeah. So either be diligent, put your name on every gift you send or do not send the gift. Exactly. There is no in between. Nope. And that gift can be the greatest thing ever. It could be a stinking vintage Veyer watch for pity's sake. Uh, if it comes without a name on it, that person, the recipient is going to be annoyed. It's going to be vaguely annoyed. Completely. It erodes all of the joy that I got from receiving the gift because I have to spend the next two weeks Where trying to find. From? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Not cool. <laughs> All right, man, that was a PSA for everybody that, I mean, that's really only been a reality for me the last two years. I never experienced this prior to the last couple of years, but in the last two years, it's really, uh, really annoyed me. Because it's the Amazon thing. It's not like the, somebody's going to buy something and pack, packing it at home and then sending it. It is yeah. somebody ordering something online to be delivered to you. Yep, yep. All right. Well, glad we got to the bottom of that. Uh, good work. Sounds like you have your work cut out for you this next week with WSL's new CEO. Man, I got to really, I got to, I'm going to go as soon as we hang up here, I'm going to go for a Rocky style jog. I'm going to put on I'm going to go jog around. I'm going to come back to the computer and write something. I'm going to start the process of cutting this man's scalp off. Drink your eight, drink ag1.com slash surf. That'll help you feel fortified in order to do it. Will do. By the way, I don't know where he's located, but you should take the weekend van, weekendvans.com at weekendvans on Instagram to go interview him. Use it as your mobile studio. Do you think uh, he's ha had for sure, uh, do you think he's gotten any advice, let's say, from CEOs past? Do you think that he has hit Eric Logan up? Hey, man. Just wanted to say a quick hello, you know, uh, just FYI, I'm the new CEO. Any, any advice you got? I highly doubt he has not been in communication with Eric Logan, but I'm sure those conversations are happening internally with current employees. The like, uh, yeah, I, I mean, the, why, why it's the WSL. That's why I was going to say, why do you put your head in the sand? Why do you do the same thing over and over and expect different results? Cause you are insane WSL, but there's like this, me, you, Derek Riley, the listener here. Uh, none of this is like rocket science. It'd be real easy for this bro. If he wanted to get out ahead of it to try to actually get out ahead of it. Like Elo pretended and faked, right? That's what made him odious. It's cause he was like, bro, let's be bros. Shaka time. Be there. All right. I'm just going to sign us off for Chaz Smith and, of course, David Scales. Thank you all for listening. Thank you for persevering our internet issues down here in El Salvador. Until next week. Keep working.